Hey guys and welcome to another Corona tutorial. In this one we are, are going to take a look at how to create some procedural materials with Corona. So I've prepared a scene with a statue. It's a Venus statue. I believe it's from Stanford. I'm not sure but it's one of those free models that usually float around. And uh, another thing I've prepared is a reference of the material. Uh, we are going to be looking at or trying to create in this in the first part of this tutorial, which is some sort of uh, copper or brass with that uh, oxidation appearing in the deep corners of the of the mesh. So well, let's get started. And uh, first thing I would usually start uh, with when creating such material is just regular kind of brass material. So let's let's get started with that. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is to get some brass-like or copper-like color, which is really dark orange. But I'm gonna make it really really dark because uh, it's gonna be metallic material, so the diffuse value shouldn't be shouldn't be too strong. And I'm gonna copy this into reflection. Set a reflection to like point eight and set the frontal IOR for brass, it's old, old brass, like weathered. So let's try like um, three, four, maybe. And uh, just, uh, um, I, I've, I've copied the color to, to retain the, the hue I had, but uh, I'm gonna just make it really slightly saturated, not too much. Okay, so this is good start. Now we can take a look again at our reference. Probably go with more orange, so like eight and twelve here. Make it slightly more saturated, and now I can start to decrease the glossiness. So I get something I like. So this actually doesn't look too bad. Again, constantly looking at a reference. What's there? I might want to push it even further towards the yellow as well as the base layer. And maybe saturate the reflection even, even more, just slightly more like this. Okay, and um, what we can do next is, I'm not sure about white balance of this image because it still doesn't match, but we can, we can ov obviously tweak it. Uh, these kind of materials are always a matter of just tweaking them until, until they look right. All right, so let's, let's go with this. And of course, to mask out our areas in the corners, we're gonna use the good old Corona Ambient Occlusion Map, which is here. And what I like to do is I'll just temporarily uh, put a mix in here into diffuse color, put Corona Ambient Occlusion here, use it as a mis mix, also put an output so I can modulate it and I'm gonna take this color which I'm gonna be tweaking and set it to some vibrant color so I really know what I'm doing and now we can start tweaking the ambient occlusion so again look at the reference and our radius is probably too high so I'm gonna start decreasing the radius maybe even further and at the same time I'm gonna really amplify the effect of ambient occlusion like this we can go even lower with, with our radius not maybe too low so oh, this looks kinda nice and again take a look at our reference and you can see it goes to like dark 
green grayish color in those areas so what I'm gonna do is to get some bitmap uh, which is metal I'm gonna get some nice metal texture that hasn't doesn't have any strong detail but something to have some variance I'm gonna plug it in here I don't think this is UV coordinates of course so I'm gonna just throw in a quick box mapping it's maybe too large all right this is nice I'm gonna put it in the other slot close up on it and obviously we can see much just yet so let's just temporarily turn off the reflection I'm gonna take RGB multiply and multiply our metal uh, metal texture with that dark green grayish kind of color until we get that effect we are after and here we can see already popping the effect popping up I may try to increase the contrast of the texture so we get some some more detail let's try now I'm just searching for a good some good angle to evaluate my texture but I'm gonna actually increase the tiling so we can see a bit more of the detail no, still nothing so we may go really hard on the texture contrast to see actually something Yep, some detail is already showing up. You can see there's there's just some like pattern. It's not it's not just just constant color. So we may choke it even more. Okay, I'm quite happy with this. But another thing I want to do is to modulate the spread of the ambient occlusion map so I'm gonna I'm gonna even amplify the ambient occlusion effect even more increase the radius slightly and I'm gonna just look at our reference and you can see it's not completely even when it comes to weathering or or the oxidation it's it's more like random so we're gonna introduce some randomness using noise I'm gonna temporarily put the noise in here set it to world and so we can see what's going on I'm gonna tweak the map here on the in the diffuse slot all right so maybe like 10 5 2 1 1.5 is about what I'm looking for I'm gonna compress the map slightly together so uh, the noise is more obvious and then I'm gonna plug this map into ambient occlusion radius or distance in this case and plug this back and we can see some more randomness in the distribution this may be actually way too strong so so I'm gonna soften it. I'm gonna actually just make this corner and soften this curve. So the fall off is more gradual. And also the choking of the of the map or compressing it wasn't a really good idea. But it's starting to come together real nicely. Maybe also increase the radius even further you can also play with the spread 
but be careful it's it's quite sensitive actually you see this is too much so let's let's go with 0 0.5 0 0.4 maybe 0 0.25 okay so we we've got our basic masks and now we can get back to to the entire material properties part so for the brass or the basic layer i'm afraid i closed my reference here we go we want some variance as well but just very very slight so i'm going to introduce some texture as well and we can use for example this looks kind of nice let's go with this reset the color mapping because it's a duplicate of our previous texture and plug this into reflection glossiness and let's put our reflection back to where it was let's see how the how it is mapped on the surface and just temporarily I'm going to temporarily disable the diffuse and just see how how our glossiness works and this is way too much contrast so I'm going to just play with the curve I want to see some color variation but just just slightly not too much okay now let's enable the diffuse back on and here you want to set some uh, we want to set some dark color basically we want just this color copy it paste it here oops that's so wrong actually <laughs> it looks like I've been I may have been uh, working on the wrong ah, oops sorry all right, so I need to get oriented in this mess. Okay, so this is the diffuse. This was multiplied by this kind of color. And here, okay, then here is the mix. We set it to black. Okay, here we go. This looks much better. Now let's again play with the green so we get it back the way it was. Okay. And now here is where the color belongs. There we go. Okay, so and I think we, we want to mask out the reflection uh, by the same procedural map because uh, the oxidized part is obviously a lot less reflective so let's just get this plug it into reflection color and uh, the reflection in the on the brass is gonna stay the same it was the reflection on the weathered part Oops, I'm gonna swap these two. There we go. And the reflection of the weathered part right here is gonna be not saturated at all. And it's gonna be really dark, like 64 maybe. And let's do also the same with the glossiness. So let's duplicate again our ambient occlusion mask mix. Let's put the reflection glossiness here color 2 is our main surface color 1 is the weathering and maybe let's duplicate it or uh, drag an output out of it and it's gonna be less glossy so let's put it like 0.6 and plug it back in and let's plug this into the reflection glossiness and we can use this to modify how glossy the surface is on 
on the weathered area. So if I overkill it, you can see it's pretty much mirror anywhere there is the oxidation. <coughs> and if I lower it to zero, you can see the oxidation is really rough. So I'm gonna set it to like 0 0.5, 0 0.4 maybe. And again, check out our reference, which I probably again closed. Here we go. And we are slowly getting there. Mm, obviously, we want this maybe generally be a bit more glossy. Like this, and the oxidation may be still too much, so we can ease up the curve. Can we can ease up this and we can decrease the radius. <coughs> Maybe let's keep the radius the way it was. <coughs> and I think we are almost there. I, I'm not really sure what else I could do, but uh, increase the contrast maybe so we bring this a little closer to, to our reference. I also could try to rotate our map so we get maybe better angle on our surface and right let's try to play with the contrast increase the exposure highlight compression as well and maybe just decrease the glossiness again <laughs> slightly and as you can see we've come quite close to to the material that we see on the reference we can also look around our statue see how it looks and maybe also just for some extra detail take this map make sure we to lower filtering and try to plug it in a bump slot as well. Oh, this is way, way too much. Yeah, this is actually a noise map, that's why. There we go. Take this. Let's look up close. This may be too strong, so let's just decrease it to something like 0.1. And I think this is it for the first part of our of our procedural material tutorial. So in this part, we've taken, we took a look at how to create some sort of oxidized copper. And in the next part, I will follow up with more materials. So see you in the next part.